Welcome back to the QuickBooks video series hosted by Proti Academy. In today's episode, we take a look at the accounts payable and accounts receivable aging summary reports. So the first thing we do is we navigate to our left-hand panel and click on the reports tab. Let's first take a look at the accounts payable aging summary. The Accounts Payable Aging Summary is for all bills that we have processed in QuickBooks that have not yet been paid. On the bill, you record a due date, and that's how the AP Aging Summary populates itself, based on due dates. Here we can see our, our open bills as of October 18th. Let's go change the details at the top. In the previous videos, we went through these details in detail. Let's look at the AP Aging Summary as at 30 September. There are a few other options, whether you want to look at the aging and the current date or the report date. Let's leave it as report date. At the top, you can also change the period of the aging and the number of periods we see. If we run the report, we can see how this sets out. Let's change our days to 15 and our periods to 8. As you can see, now we have more columns with less days in between. Let's go back to our standard settings. Here you can see we've set the report back to how it looks. Our current column is for any bills that are not yet due. So bills we've recorded, but the due date has not come to pass. 1 to 30 would then be 1 to 30 days outstanding after the due date. It's important to remember that it's after the due date and not after the bill date. If you click on the total column, this will bring up the AP detail and will list any payments or bills that are sitting in the detail that make up the balance. As we can see, we only have the one bill here. It also shows you here how many days it's been outstanding. And at the top, you can select your parameters as required. Let's go back to our report. Over here, we have a negative $250. Let's go look what this stems from. Here we can see it was a journal entry. Let's click on the amount to get, go into the journal entry and get more details. Here we can see that it was an overpayment, and that's why it's sitting on our AP aging. It has not been linked yet to a bill. Let's go create a bill quickly so that we can match this bill to the journal entry. I'm just going to create a quick bill to the vendor mail for the exact same amount as our negative, the $250. I'll create this bill as at 30 September. Let's refresh our report. We can now see that Mel's bill is zero in balance, but because the items were created in different periods, they are still sitting on our AP aging summary. They need to be set off against each other. To do this, we click on the bill. Go into the bill to get more details. And over here, we'll click Mark as Paid. This will bring up our payment screen. As you can see, the bill and the journal entry are both ticks setting each other off to the zero balance. So even though it chooses a bank account to pay the money in, it's paying it at zero. So this has no effect of your bank, which is what we want. It's just setting the two items off. Let's save and close and go back to our reports.
Get your facial out. Now you can see that Mel's gone because the 250 credit and debit have been set off against each other and no longer appear on our AP Aging Summary. As always, you can add notes at the bottom and you can change the headings. One thing that's important to note with the AP Aging Summary is it's the same as a balance sheet. It's as at a certain date, not for a period, like our profit and loss date. We can also see the following um, buttons at the top where we can export to CSV or Excel or add to our management reports. Let's add these to our management reports, we'll, which we'll look at at the end of the reporting series. You can also change the settings by the gear icon. Let's switch over to the modern view. The modern view has all the same information and buttons as the classic view, just in different areas of the reports. Yeah, we can change the settings on how we view it. And at the top, we can click back to classic view or we can export or add this to a group or schedule a report. Let's take a look at scheduling a report. Yeah, we would create a workflow. So the, the top section asks you questions relating to what frequency you would like to send the report out and at what date the report should be run. Yeah, we can see we can change it to once a month and choose to send it on the first of every month or maybe every Friday of every month. And we can choose an end date for sending out the reports. Or we can click the never button to make sure we receive a report every week or every month, depending on the frequency you set. Over here, we would enter the details of how to send the report, adding in email addresses and who we want to CC along with the body of the email. Once you save this, then based on your frequency every month or every week, it would send a report out as you've set on that screen. You can also add or uh, the report to email and just send a once-off email to a client or a fellow team member. He has a screen where you can edit all the details and it shows you what you are attaching to your email. Under the save option there's a few new options as well and you can add your report to a group. Yeah we can click on add group and let's create a group that will then add this report to. So we don't have to create a whole set of management reports like we have been doing so far. We could just create a small group and group our reports together. We can also share our reports with people who have the link and might not have access to our entire QuickBooks. We still have the same filter option. Yeah, we can filter by vendor and then we still have the similar general options. The only change is the aging option. These were the options I showed you on the classic report. We can change the uh, number of days in the aging and the number of periods. Yeah, we can also change our, all our settings as we previously, previously shown. Let's go back to the classic report. Here's our customized features as shown on the modern report. Let's go to take a look if there are any other AP aging reports we can run. The second report we can pull is the accounts payable detail report. This shows the report listed out per a uh, due date criteria like current or 0 to 30 or 90 days plus and it will list all the transactions that are open. So instead of just seeing the balances as a summary, we'll see the actual transactions under each aging criteria. We can still click on the bill to get the detail. 
Let's change this bill to earlier in the year so we can see how it sits if there's different aging brackets. Yeah, we can see two different aging brackets and the bills that are listed under them. Let's go take a look now at our accounts receivable aging summary. This is very similar to our accounts payable aging summary. And you'll see that they look almost identical. The only difference is this is who owes us money. And this is for our customers. As you can see, you can change all the criteria as you could in the accounts payable summary. Yeah, it shows us how many customers owe us money and the aging. Same as with the accounts payable, the aging is current, means that the due date has not been yet reached. And then 1 to 30 would mean days after the due date is reached. Let's add this to our management reports for our final video. Let's switch to the classic view and we can see here that we have the same options that we had before. We can also add it to our group we created with the accounts payable aging summary. We have the same options to filter and same general options. Yeah, we can filter by customer. On the modern view, you can have the refresh report button, which helps that you don't have to refresh at the top. Let's go back to the classic view. As we can see here, we still have the customizations as with the modern. Let's go back to reporting and look at some other reports we can use for our customers. You don't have accounts, receivable aging detail. I only have the very basic subscription, but I do know you can get that report with the more superior subscriptions. If you scroll down, you'll come across a who owes you money section. And this has very valuable reports for your customer. So it will be a good place to look if you're looking for any customer information. This report is the collections report. And it will show you what invoices you need or are still outstanding per customer. So it lists them all out, which is quite nice. This is the customer balance summary. And as you can see, it lists a balance per customer. Yeah, you can pull it as a, a certain date as well. Let's quickly add one invoice to a different customer. So you can see how it lists the customers out on this report. So yeah, we can see now our two customers and their balances. This is quite handy if you want need the list by our customer. Some other nice reports are invoice list and this invoice and payment screen. This shows exactly each invoice and each payment and you can match them and see which payment was matched to which invoice. This helps if you have a customer who pays many invoices at once. Here are some further customer reports that are good to look into if you need further details on your customer. This is a terms list and it just shows the current terms that we have with various customers. There's a similar section for your payables. If you scroll down to the bottom, past business overview and past who owes you, there'll be what you owe. And this section is all your vendor reports. 
and they have some similar reports to what we just looked at, including an invoice list or an unpaid bills report. This is a handy report if you do payment requests weekly. You can pull this report at a specific date and see exactly which bills are unpaid. And from this list, decide which payments are due and which payments you should make. We also often use the transaction list by vendor report. This helps you to see ex every single transaction that has gone through the vendor accounts for a certain period. We use this to help us with our 1099 processing at year end. Yeah, you can see you select a period that under review, and then it will show you each vendor and exactly each and every transaction that that vendor has completed within this certain period that you're pulling. Thank you for watching this episode of the QuickBooks video series hosted by Protea Academy. In our next episode, we'll take a look at cash flow reports.